Hackers are, by definition, diverse thinkers. They think outside the box. That's what makes them so good at what they do. To defeat them in their attacks, we need to think differently too. And so we need to increase cognitive diversity in the cybersecurity workforce, which is a challenge, which is a real challenge. Uh, we do a great job as a community educating people from the right backgrounds. They go to the best high schools, they get into the top colleges and universities, they study the right fields, and uh, they have some security specialization, and then they join the cybersecurity workforce, and they do great. They have excellent careers. Uh, we do we do well at that as a community, and, and we do exceptionally uh, well at that at, at RIT, of course. But, but what we need to do is uh, bring different people into the workforce, which means we need to think differently about how we train people who think differently. Uh, so, so our technical training uh, needs to be adapted to increase accessibility. And that goes beyond just a, a, a paint job on our pedagogical models. This actually requires some redefinition of the way we train uh, mid-career transitioners or those who, who uh, don't come from that same sort of path in, in the K through 12 to undergrad to master's degree and so on. Um, so having a, a career launch pad that starts with a, with a technical training focused towards um, the ability, the skill uh, development in, in diverse thinkers and in, in different learners um, is really the, a great first step, uh, but then it needs to be followed up with uh, meaningful individual assignments on practical experiences, uh, building challenging group work, using the differences uh, to the benefit of the overall product. Uh, so that forces, that really does uh, build exceptional communication skills uh, across blended teams. Um, it's one thing to be good at your job, but if you are the only one that's good at your job and you can't work with the others who are good at their jobs in their own way, um, then then we're missing important components. And and uh, just having more diversity in the cybersecurity workforce is, is, is good. Uh, but leveraging that diversity for the cumulative benefit is really what we're designing uh, here. And and so, um, of course, building those skills, having the group work uh, needs to be augmented for the individual apprentice to 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 graduate into a full fledged uh, um, role. And so they become journeymen or experts in their field. And and so that transition is, is very important. And so um, traditional resources like resume workshops, uh, mock interviews, uh, networking uh, sessions really does help to leverage the portfolio of experiences that they've created in this blended work environment uh, into a meaningful a meaningful career. And so uh, having individualized support for placement is really an important component of the apprenticeship model for uh, non-traditional non-traditional and underrepresented persons. Cognitive diversity isn't just the right thing to do. It's also the smart thing to do. Uh, through this apprenticeship, we look forward to creating a model that other network members can use. Um, we plan to develop and publish andragogical framework, uh, evaluation criteria, a rubric for um, educating adults of a variety of backgrounds so that they can perform high skill tasks. Um, so we endeavor to create therefore a catalog of best practices that network members can use in creating high impact public interest technology apprenticeships of their own. This program is built on a pre-apprenticeship model that we constructed during the time of COVID uh, with online upskilling or reskilling potential. So we built a model company, a fake company, a uh, simulation that allows new trainees to practice in a controlled environment what it would be like to be a cybersecurity apprentice or an intern. And so they have hands-on tasks, uh, emails, trouble tickets, and so on, and promote through uh, general IT, troubleshooting into security-specific problems, and then um, and then uh, have a culminating experience as a team, as a group, uh, working through um, uh, sort of a, a realistic environment, uh, assessing vulnerabilities and and recommending mitigations. So this allows somebody with no technology background an opportunity to get the skills that they need at the foundational level uh, to then apply them in a paid experience. And so again, this is what we we uh, will build the apprenticeship program on top of. So the exposure here. Uh, is to uh, fundamentals in a, a variety of operating systems and security and, and IT fundamentals, 
uh, information systems, uh, risk assessment, and so on, and some soft skills, uh, project management, group work, and so on. And they apply a series of tools as well, uh, some common tools across the across the industry, and uh, will have a fo- foundational awareness uh, at, at the exposure level to these before entering the apprenticeship. So then they apply the skills and the tools that they learned in the pre-apprenticeship for actual, real critical infrastructure protection. Um, and we have focused uh, on, on with the with the Eaton Cybersecurity Safe Lab within our IT. Uh, we do a lot of work in energy, healthcare, voting, finance, uh, supporting real companies, real real products, and 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 um, manufactured goods to have a security life cycle that includes assessment and security engineering. And so these apprentices will be working uh, under under the guidance of the of the Eaton Cybersecurity Safe Lab to to address real cybersecurity issues in these critical infrastructure sectors. Of course, we do work outside of these sectors as well. Uh, so they'll have a wide range of, uh, of, of available uh, applied skills and, and familiarity with tools before they seek permanent employment uh, after the apprentices, apprenticeship is over. There's a lot that we don't know about cybersecurity training. Uh, we know a lot about cybersecurity education, but training for adult learners um, is is in some ways new and different from what we're used to. And we will learn about how to do that, not just for traditional learners, but for diverse learners in particular, who have a, a varied need of of um, uh, learning resources and 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 whatnot. The the models that we use to train um, cybersecurity to educate cybersecurity workers are, are, are really built on on pedagogy um, from K through 12 all the way through even a higher order uh, uh, study at, at the graduate level it's really still that same model and what we're looking to do is create new ways of understanding at the andragogical level uh, for adult learners these these tools and, and evaluate these tools and so um, it's our goal that the project itself will provide resources that the network can use to advance the field of apprenticeship design and application for non-traditional learners uh, at different stages of their life. In a couple of years, I think we'll see uh, more and more apprenticeship programs like this uh, become available. I think over five years and, and looking toward 10 years, we're going to start to see higher education shift some of its business model in, into uh, non-traditional learning uh, like apprenticeships, like pre-apprenticeships uh, for training and workforce development. I think we're all relatively aware of the, the proverbial demographic cliff uh, that faces higher education with less numbers of, of tuition, uh, tuition uh, paying students coming um, into a, you know a f- traditional four year model, so having a diversity in in our in our revenue streams as as higher education I think is important. So that'll be a foundational driver I think in uh, creating more of these types of apprenticeship programs and pre apprenticeship boot camp uh, type programs. And I, I think so that's that's kind of part of the question, right? What what do I see the field of education in, in the next two to ten years? Uh, but I, but I think um, we also have some interesting horizon for cybersecurity in, in general as well. So the cybersecurity workforce, I think, will will start to shift away from the excessive demands that we see in hiring practices now with five years and a master's degree at an entry-level position in cyber is, is untenable. Um, and I think what we'll start to develop a, an appreciation for is how um, different backgrounds, different um, educational levels, and different skill sets can work complementarily to, to find solve cybersecurity problems and having that uh, bench strength and an appreciation for where those problems live and how to get get after them in in a the people processes and technologies perspective i think we're going to see that more and more over the next decade in cybersecurity as well i'm happy to be a part of the potential uh, at finding some solutions that will be meaningful so thanks <laughs>